know when people are on. Does it say? Okay. Say Nobody joined yet. Oh. You might have to start just wait five minutes. Hello. So we are waiting for some people to arrive, but soon I will be talking about this book right here called Like Vanessa. That is by Tammy Charles. Okay, so this book, Like Vanessa, it's one of my favorite books. It's by Tammy Charles. And this book, I first read this book at a book club that my old teacher, that my old teacher used to was hosting during the spring or winter of last year and I like this book because it's it's really well written for one it's really well written I can picture every like every action that happens I can picture what's going on in my brain in my head because of how well written it is and I like this book because it just speaks to me and it speaks to me because it's just like really inspirational and it's basically about a, a dark-skinned girl who's insecure about herself and how dark her skin is because everybody makes fun of her for it because of all the racist stereotypes that black girls can't do pageants um, black girls can't do this or that and it's about yeah it's about that it's about vanessa who is a dark-skinned girl in america and how she wants to join a pageant and be like vanessa williams and be like vanessa williams so her teacher her papa and her cousin they help her out to get prepped and all that to get prepped to get ready for everything teach you the basics about pageants and like being elegant and it's just a really good book i highly recommend it you can find it at barnes and noble or online i think now let's start reading okay. <clears throat> chapter one filthy stinking years pop pop gave me my first darlene eight years ago and a brand new one every year after that custom made of pressed dried flowers spanning every color of the rainbow most kids my age would call darlene a diary but she's much more than that than a place to write stupid lists of cute of the cutest guys in eighth grade darlene is my chill spot a place to share the lyrics in my head and the words crawling through my bones the latest gossip running through Grifton Hill, today's hot topic, Miss America. <clears throat> Pop Pop and I got a bet going this year. Miss America's gonna be crowned. Miss America's never crowned a black girl. Ever. And that pageant's been going on ever since 1933. Where I see it, the powers that have be uh, the powers that have no plans whatsoever to pick a girl who looks like me. Let Pop Pop tell you everything's gonna change this year. Watching Miss America is a little tradition. Each of us, each of us eyeing the screen, clutching onto a memory long gone. His memory is of the is of time with his daughter and my mother. My mother. Honey eyed vanilla coated little little by singing angel. Him pretending that one that on this very day every year he could have a piece of his little girl back to me and me and me watching alongside pop pop my memory pushing pushing and hope pushing hoping forcing myself to remember her to remember what it was like to remember what having a mother feels like 
to even for a second drown myself in her beauty through I, though I don't look a thing like her. I pull up my ho- I pull up the hot comb Pop made and all my favorite hair bows. Pop Pop lets me straighten and braid my hair while he nurses while he nurses a coffee coffee cup of whiskey. Me per- me pretending I'm the only one getting my hair done and mom is doing it. Pop Pop pretending the whiskey's a cure all. Magic potion and a magic potion and all of its bitter and all of its bitter sweetness. Helping him remember too. The hot comb glides through with ease. My grandfather has some silky long. My grandfather has some silky long curly hair. He says he gets it from his Cherokee side. The Cherokee blood must skip must have skipped over me. Speak up. <clears throat> Halfway through the show, two black women made it to the top ten: Miss New York Vanessa Williams and Miss New Jersey Suzette Charles. They're both so beautiful, black and black, the light skinned and curly hair type like Pop Pop and Mama. Maybe they got some Cherokee in them too. This is it, Nessie, Pop Pop says before they start to announce the top five. This is all you get. Get in here, TJ, we about to make history. My cousin TJ comes running to the living room, feather, feather boa in one hand and a pen sketch and a pen and sketch pad in the other. He wraps the bow around my neck saying, here you go, Miss America. Then he plops down on the couch and starts drawing pageant gowns like mad. On the fuzzy black white, black and white screen, Gary Collins starts announcing runners up. And just as Papa predicts, this year a black woman, this year a black woman made history at Miss America pageant. Because not one, but two of us are standing there waiting to be announced as a winner. My fist clenched with the strength of an, of an army of 10,000 strong, hopes flying, sky high anxiety drowning in my chest. Will Miss America, with the Miss America pageant even let a black girl win? Give girls like me the tiniest piece of hope that yes, black is beautiful. Even if, even if it means that they start with the light and bright, two shades, two shades from white kind. Because if so, then that means that one day girls like me, the darkest of black, can be seen pretty too. Suzette Child takes the first runner-up spot, and at this point I'm thinking, okay, we've come close enough. We ain't gonna see a day like this in probably another 50 years. And your new Miss America is Vanessa Williams. Gary shouts through the microphone. I swear I was about to lose my mind. The spotlight slow on to Vanessa's back to the bone, silver and white, one one shouldered gown. The audience thunders applause after the crown is placed on her head. She takes a ceremonial a ceremonial walk down the runway. She's working it too. Hips swing, teeth all shining, and she's got that Miss America wave down pat. I stare at the screen. I stare real long and hard. Vanessa Williams' face fades away and Mama sets in. I really, I mean, really, they could be twins. It's like Mama can see me through the television, right, right through me. <clears throat> and the way that she's looking is, it's like making a promise. She'll come back someday, when thing, when things are right, when all the broken pieces are mended back together. We'll go back to the time. We'll go back to the time when it was us, the Martins, minus the booze, minus the stares, minus the whispers. These days, you might you might as well call us left behinds. We're the only ones left behind the day. We're the only ones that were left behind the day Mama walked out all those years ago. That was when everything changed. The rest of the family forgot about us. Papa turned to the booth. Dad, Daddy's spirit up and died, and we moved to the projects of Griffin Hill. Daddy walked into that empty bedroom of his of his black of his soul black as night and locked the door. I ain't seen inside that room or his heart ever since. Only comes out to go to work, which can be any time, day or night. Things will get better again, Mama whispers through the television like sweet honeydew in summer. A shiver courses down the arch of my back. I'm soaking in Mama, well Vanessa, 
through the screen as if she sees me, the real me. It's like I know I gotta do something to make everything right before for everybody. And <clears throat> all I gotta do is find mama, but how? I'm sitting I'm sitting on our brown shag carpet, boohooing like a dang fool, clutching onto the dark moon. My shoulders shaking worse than an earthquake. My prayers turn into words that I hold on to fighting and to remember. So me and Darlene can talk about it later. Next thing I know, I'm, I'm up off that floor, wiping away my tears, jumping up and down, clapping my hands. I'm clapping for Vanessa, clapping for Mama, clapping for me. All those years I've watched these past. All the years I've watched this pageant, and not once did I see a black girl win. No one ever did. Not before tonight. I know I'm never going to forget this. I start pr prancing around the room, doing the Miss America wig. I close my eyes real tight, like picture Miss, Amer picture Miss America crown on Mama's head. Picture it on mine, too. Picture Daddy smiling again, wrapping his big, earthy, old, earthy hands around Mama's tiny little waist like he used to do. Papa pulls me close to his chest, his liquor laden scented shirt, stink, stinging my nose. That's gonna be you one day, Nessie. You're gonna be singing. You're gonna, your singing is just as good as Vanessa Williams, and Miss America's got your name, got the same name as you. It's meant to be, baby girl. Yeah, when you, whew, yeah, when you make, when you do it make it to Miss America, you already know who's gonna be doing all your styling. I won't even charge full price, PJ jokes. And at that moment I believe that that they say that what they say could be true for me. That I could be like Vanessa Williams, as long as it doesn't make take no fifty stinking years. Cause I'm not sure me and Mama got that kind of time on our hands. And that's one full chapter of the book. That's one full chapter of the book. So, and yeah. So basically, that's what this book is about. It's about this girl who wants to be like everyone else, but her skin is the only thing that is stopping her because she feels like that it will take a long time, like it did for Vanessa Williams, to even be a nominee. A nominee or a runners up in the competition and she just wants to she just wants to um give the tiniest bit of hope or have some hope that she and all the other dark skinned girls in the world can be beautiful just like all the light skins all the brown skins the white the white girls mexicans latinas all of the above every race and you have huh? to read for 30 minutes. Yeah. I'll read chapter 2. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways. Well, here's a sneak peek of the little ending that we got here on chapter 2. Read the whole chapter 2. Okay. September 19th, 1983. Unpretty. The world ain't so unpretty. The, the world ain't so pretty. If there are no flowers, no seeds to bear, no sun to cast out the darkness, no soil to fill it with promises to remind us that, that like wings, hope can take flight even among all things unpretty. Dear Darlene, I love that part in the bluest eye that talks about someone being bad for certain types of flowers. Pe Pecula think, thinks that why seeds won't grow in her town as among the garbage. Maybe it's just too late. You think that Toni Morrison's ever been to Newark? Cause, Cause there ain't nothing here but garbage too. Garbage on the streets, in those needles, in those needles, the dope heads drop in the alleys, in the elevators that carry me to the eighth floor of my apartment in Griffin Hill. Except there ain't no flowers in my hood. Just fake plastic general store looking sunflower pop pop puts on the windowsill. Trying to pretend like our crib is some pet house out in Beverly Hills, but everybody knows that you can cover. Up, oh, that you could cover up, um, caca with perfume, but after a while, it's still gonna stink, Nessie. <coughs> Chapter two. Not even Daddy calls me that. 
It's six period. It's six period chorus, and as usual, I'm not the only one ignoring the teacher. Scatter noises of gossip and hip hop rhymes bat and hip hop rhyme battles it out against the melody. Miss Walden's playing on the piano. Eighth graders, thirty five. Miss Walton zero. My seat is in the back of our dungeon, like a music room. Uh, of our dungeon, like music room, because behind chaos, behind Tanisha, Tanisha who lost herself in the sketch pad. I sink into my chair, placing the blue eye on top of Darlene and reach and reach for my next read. I know why the cage bird sings. Papa said he got a special for me because I'm his little songbird. I turn to the first page, ready to lose myself in the words, ready to pretend I'm anywhere but here. Miss Watson stopped playing the piano. I suddenly feel an icy pair of eyes hawking me. Vanessa Martin, school's in session. School's been in session for three weeks now. You think you want to join us sometime soon? Tension tiptoes, tiptoes up my spine. I sit up straight like I've been listening all along, which is a bald face lie. But all of the people in my room, but, all, but all, out of all the people in the room, she still chooses to call on me. Everyone turns to look at me like, what are you going to do now? Even Tanisha staring me down, begging me to say something, anything. My lips turn to salt and I start to quiver at the thought of being stared at because even one second of attention is one second too long. Everybody got their rep in eighth grade. Mine, I'm like oxygen. You know I'm there, but you don't see me. I shut my mouth, I make good grades, and when the bell rings at the end of the day, I take my butt home, close my door, and dream of a place far, far away from here. Guidance made me take this class. Singing just ain't my thing. My voice said a loud whisper. It's enough to produce a few oohs, a few o's. And once it, and once that starts, I know the teacher will have to point to prove. Miss Walden so, slowly stretched to my desk, click clacking, the click clacking up her heels. I go through the room. The tiny, her tiny frame grows larger as she walks towards me, looking like that she's ready to start something. She's new to King Middle and probably t never taught a single black kid in her life. And like most of the teach and like most of the white teachers they send here, she won't last the full year. Especially since Junto Martinez orders orders the Latin doubles, I think that's how you pronounce it, to break into her car. That's the tradition of every new teacher, black or white. Miss Walden will be here and gone within a season. Here to be fed fed up with us. Ugh, feed with us, possibly. Blinded by her hope to make a difference. Blinded by her hope to make a difference. And before the school year ends, she'll bounce. But I'm used to that. I'll give her till Christmas. Tell me, she says, checking my books that I've done a poor job of hiding. What do you want to do with your life? Okay. My eyes rise up to the ceiling and stay there, glued to the dried up sweat tissue bombs hanging for dear hanging for dear life. Lady, I don't feel like you're on one of those save our black youth speeches. That's what I want to say to her, but I know that South's talk will get me sent to the principal's office. And the last thing I need is daddy come up in here. Me and him got enough problems. I hesitate before I speak, trying to think of what trying to think of what she'd want me to she'd want to hear come out of my mouth. I say I want the I want to end world hunger or find or find world peace. Teachers like that kind of talk. Plus, it seems like a safe enough answer to make her leave me alone until the bell rings, and then no one will have to know the real me, because because I want to be, ooh, and then no one will want to no one will have to know the real me I want to be. Nessie wants to be Miss America one day. Spells out to Nisha before I have a chance to lie. She can sing. Suddenly, I feel naked. Like straight up covered in layers upon layers of fat, and a whole, and the whole class looking at me like a tub of lard of lard naked. Tanisha turns and flashes me a cheesy smile, like she'd done something good. My lips turn upward in a weak smile, but I really want, but I really want to, uh, I really want to do is smack her one good time upside the head. Sometimes I think Tanisha ain't too bright upstairs. Because if she were, she would remember that my Miss America dreams are private for no one else to know and make fun of, especially Curtis DeMont. Miss America, yeah, right. 
Curtis yells with a toothy grin. Of course, all his homeboys laugh. I knew that was coming. Man, please, real black people ain't gonna mi real black people ain't gonna win Miss America. That's for them high yellow girls. That's from them high yellow girls and white girls with the light hair, light eyes, and little bodies. He shot. And last time I checked, y'all tar baby self ain't got none of that. Curtis got a lot of nerves with his busted behind teeth. The top row doubled, yes, doubled, as in there are two complete rows of teeth, and probably solves a mystery of the missing ones on the bottom. Calm down now, everyone, Mrs. Walton squeals, but falls deaf in ears. Not stopping there. Curtis stands up with his fake wannabe gangster rapper self and spits out a rhyme. Vanessa, Vanessa is whack, whack, because Vanessa, Vanessa is too black, black. The whole class starts dying, but a gut hunched over, black, bust a gut hunched over, bladder holding, laughing. My skin grows tight from my body. I, <clears throat> it wants to split open and empty everything inside out. But I ain't letting them see me like that. A not sized baseball bulges in my throat. He, here comes Tanisha turning around and looking at me with those hazel eyes mouthing, I'm sorry. Now would be a good time for the floor to open up and swallow me whole. I'm not playing with you guys. Settle down. Miss Walton yells out, flailing her little arms like a helpless newborn bird. But her voice barely rises over the rumblings of the students. She too dark. Don't she know that she's too fat to be in a beauty pageant? Man, that Miss America chick wasn't really black. She was mixed or something. What will Vanessa do for a real pageant? Read? It's like a despot. It's like a despot up in King Middle today. I sit on my desk thinking about watching the pageant in anger and boiling up inside me. Anger boiling up inside me, worse than a pot of collard greens on a Sunday afternoon. <clears throat> I might not ever make it to Miss America's stage, but it ain't stupid, but it won't be stupid because Curtis says I can't. I stand up abruptly to my, I stand up abruptly, my notebooks and pencils crashing to the floor, Curtis and his friends, and his dumb friends laughing harder, like a bolt of lightning slicing through the clouds, my words jolt them and leave them frozen in their seats. You can make fun of me all you want, but at least I got all my teeth. It looks like the top row ate the bottom of yours. <laughs> the class singing, dang, as Curtis sits in the back of his chair, all stupid, like trying to come up with the, with his next crackback. I'm standing there, towering over his scrawny little, scrawny little behind, wondering where his voice, came, wondering where this voice came from. Me, the girl who'd rather chew on her fingernails than talk in class. Me, the girl who had her dreams put out there only to be made fun of. Me, the girl who just shut down the class, the class clown. Hmm? Hmm? <clears throat> Tanisha slaps me a high five like I just won a championship over a baseball game, but I don't feel like a winner at all. Flames start out of my cheeks in my... <laughs> Flames dart out of my cheeks. My all too too smooth my all too small shirt has has risen up yet yet again my stomach's spilling out of my jeans you gotta have talent to be in a miss america pageant you idiot and this and Nessie here got a voice straight from heaven believe that boy tanisha is up out of her seat now too her arms long spread as eagles the class responds to a chorus fashion ooh and someone hollers she served you son <clears throat> the bell rings leaving curtis no chance to crack back the room empties and Tanisha waits for me as I pick my things up from out the, uh, as I pick my things from the floor. My whole body's hover there longer than it sh longer than it should. <clears throat> the truth is, ain't much left inside. I can't stand up if you if you don't got no bones. You know, Vanessa, my daughter, Vanessa, my daughter, and I watch the pageant too. In fact, we watch it every year. A friend of mine volunteers for the Miss New Jersey pageant. <clears throat> She was able to, she was able to, to get a few board members to help sponsor the, for a pageant at King Middle School this year. They're donating the crown, the banner, the works. Fire's going up tomorrow. Maybe you'll consider trying out. I rise up to see a much different face. The crunch rolls around. The crunch folds around Miss Walton's eyebrows have softened. Oh, now you want to be nice to me now that the circus death is over. 
I could imagine I could imagine Miss Walden being glued to the television for sure. It's a colored it's a colored one, probably big too. Hmm. Hmm. I shrugged my shoulders looking down at her and in this moment I'm painfully reminded how big I am for my age. I think you're right, Vanessa. You can you can absolutely go for Miss America in a few years. Why not? <clears throat> you're pretty and smart. Would be nice to actually hear you sing instead of watching you hide behind a book. This is qu this is choir after all. Chorus choir. <clears throat> after all. My cheeks grow warm again, and somewhere deep beneath the layers of black skin, I can feel blush. I can feel them blush pink. Miss Walton, Tanisha interrupts. Nessie sings the church in the church choir. You should come when I poke her in the ribs. The last person I invite to church is Miss Walden. I can see her sitting among all them black folks, catching the Holy Ghost in the pews around her. That woman would stick out like a baby, like a baby lamb in a field of lions. <clears throat> Don't listen to Tanisha with all don't listen to Tanisha and with that I grabbed my big mouth friend and dragged her to the next period. I know Miss Watson is faking it anyway with all that talk. It's a part of her job to make girls like me feel like that they could be somebody. To pretend like she's my friend when the truth is that she'd probably that she'd probably uh, probably dead bolt her doors if I ring the door if I ring the bell to sell Girl Scout cookies. But still, she did ask me to be in the pageant, and she did call me pretty, as in lovely, as in gorgeous. Not even daddy calls me that. And that's chapter two. So, hmm? And again, this book is called Like Vanessa. You can find it at um, Barnes & Noble, local bookstore. This one cost 17 this copy cost $17. And it's a good book to read. It's a good book to read if you're like hosting a book club, if you're, you know, just wanting to find a good book to read and get into, it gets it gets way more interesting as you get deeper into it. And yeah, that's basically all there is to this book so far. I hope you liked my little preview to the book. And yes, have a safe day. Be safe. Stay inside. And hope you all are doing well. Bye.